On the left side, we've got three equations. On the right side, we have three graphs. And our job is we have to match the equations with the proper graph. I'm going to teach you how to do that using two ways. I'm going to teach you the long way, and I'm going to teach you the really short way. And you do have to understand both of them. So let's start with the long way here. The long way involves you have to make a table of values. So you go ahead, you pick this one here. You make an X and a Y chart. That's what a table of values is. And then you have to just pick some numbers for X. You know, it doesn't matter what you pick. I'm going to pick these ones. I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. You can pick anything you want. You don't even have to pick this many points. I'm just going to go with this many here. And then we're going to repeat it for the others. That's the start. Now let's do the rest. What we have to do here is we have to substitute all of these X values in place of X over here. Now look, we go like this. We go Y equals, we'll write the 2, and in brackets, because we are multiplying here, see there's no addition or, mul or subtraction or multiplication symbol. There's nothing. So that means we're multiplying. That's the deal. So we're going to go 2 times X is negative 2, so we'll substitute X, and then we'll minus 5. When you multiply these two, you get negative 4. And then you minus 5, you get negative 9. If you repeat it with negative 1, you're going to get 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Minus 5 is negative 7. And if you repeat it, you're going to get negative 5, you're going to get negative 3 here, and you're going to get negative 1. That's step 1. Then what you do is you locate these points on the graph. But Mr. Mellum, you didn't do the, you didn't fill these all in. That's okay. We're going to get there. The first thing is we're going to try to find out which of these three graphs is the first one. So we will find this one. We will find negative two and negative nine. We remember that the horizontal line is the X and the vertical line is the Y. Then we will go to X is negative two and Y is negative nine. So like battleship, you go X, here's zero, 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 zero. That's the origin. We're going to go X is negative two. And then Y is negative nine. So that's below the line. So negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we are done. We're finished. That's it. We know what this line is. We know that this first equation belongs to the green line. We could go ahead and test any of these other points. They are all on the line. I will show you. X is negative 1 and Y is negative 7. Here's negative 1, X. Y is negative 7 falls right here. You go to the third point, X is 0. Where's X 0? X 0 is right in the middle. And Y is negative 5. So we have to go down 5 and look at that. All of these points that I created are on the green line. So why would I waste my time and test them all when I know it's the green line? It's a no-brainer. I just go like this. It's the green line, which leaves two more. Let's test it out. We have y equals negative 3. And I will put all of these x values one at a time instead of in place of x over here. So I will put negative 2 first. And then it says add two more. So if I multiply these, what do I get? Positive 6. Plus 2 is positive 8. Look, I'm not going to waste my time with all these other ones. I'm going to find this one here. Negative 2 and positive 8 is right here. Here's negative 2. And positive 8 goes, oh my God, look, there's positive 8. But we have two lines sharing the same point. So we're still not sure if it's the blue line or the red line. Because both railroad tracks cross at that point. So we will go ahead and test another point. We will go negative 1, put him here, negative 1. And now when I multiply these, I get positive 3 plus 2 more, positive 5. So I will find this point here, negative 1 and positive 5. Negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, positive 5. Do I have to go and test all these others? If it's worth five marks, yeah, you go ahead, you do all of them. You prove to your teacher you know what you're doing. But for this sake and purpose, I know it's my red line. I know that this here is going to be the red line. I can go ahead and prove it to you, and I do recommend you do all of these points. If I plot zero in, I'm going to get y equals negative three times zero plus two. We know this here makes zero. Anything times zero is what? Zero. Plus two is two. 
you go x0, y2. Here's x0, it's right in the middle. X line, zero's in the middle. Y is two, goes one, two. It's still on the red line. We know it's the red line. I'm gonna stop there. What does that mean? I've matched these two up, which means that this here has to be line C, but let's go ahead and prove it, especially since it's a tricky equation. What it really says is Y equals, see that negative? There's no number there. Yes, there is. It's negative one multiplied by x. If you just see negative, it's negative one. One is optional. To write the one is optional. You, you have to write the negative, but the one is optional. Now I'm going to put it in so you see what's happening. Plus six more. So what that means is I'm going to go y equals, let's put negative two in first. So we'll go negative one multiplied by negative two. Plus six will make, let's see, this makes positive two. Plus six more is positive eight. So that what that means is we have negative 2 and positive 8. Negative 2 is here. Positive 8 is that point here that was shared by the last line. See, they're both negative 2, positive 8. So we go to negative 1. We go y equals, this is negative 1, multiplied by negative 1, because that's what that is, negative 1. And then we're going to add 6, and that's going to get a 7. So negative one's here and positive seven is going to be, because it's positive seven, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is the blue line. You can test all these points. They will all fall on the blue line. And that's how you do it the long way. Now, what's the short way? What's the short way of doing this? The short way, as you have seen here, is I didn't have to make all these points. I just had to find one point. So let me show you what that is here. Remember when I was doing this the long way and I would say, okay, here's negative two, negative nine, and I found negative two, went down negative nine, and I said, okay, I got it. I didn't have to test all these other points. I didn't have to do all these. That's the long way. Doing all the points is the long way. The short way is to say, hey, look, I got my point. I don't have to go and test all these other ones. Once I find one point, that's it. I found the line. So let's see what that looks like if I started it from the very beginning. So I'll put these all back. I'm going to erase all these other dots here. What I do is I locate an easy point that I can easily calculate on the line, like this one here. Look at the red one. I'm going to calculate this point. It's simple because there's a zero. See, X here. You go right to the middle. That's zero. So this point here is at zero and Y is two, positive two. So what that means is this is my X and this is my Y. If I take this X, this zero, and I put it in this and that and that, I substitute it in, my answer needs to be positive two because that's what Y is. So let's test it out here. If I go two times zero, this is X, put it here, zero, minus five, that makes Y equals negative three, but my Y is positive two, so this is wrong. It's not this one. That's not the red line. I'll go ahead and test it over here. Y equals negative three times zero, because that's X again, right? Remember, X is zero, so I'm going to substitute it in. Plus two more, that makes positive two. I found my line. I tested one point. I got my answer for X and Y, and I'm done. It's the red line. This is red. So then I will repeat for the other two. I will go ahead. I'll find a point on the blue line. This is an easy point. Why is that a point that I love? Because go down, bloop, look at the X value, it's zero. So I love zeros, and you should too, because zeros are wonderful. X is zero, but what is the value of Y? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go ahead, plug X in, I'll substitute into all of these two leftovers. If I put it in here, look what happens. Y equals negative one times x is zero, plus six makes what? Makes y equals six. I got my answer. x is zero, y is six. x is zero, y is six. It's the blue line. That's this one, the blue one, which leaves one other one, which is going to be the red one. Ah!